Hi guys! So today I am here for Top 5 Wednesday. Top 5 Wednesday was created by Lainey from Ginger Reads Lainey and is now hosted by Samantha from Thoughts on Tomes. Both channels will be linked down below. Now I just got back from vacation. I've been driving for two hours. I look a mess and I'm sick. So this video is probably going to be lacking in excitement. We'll see. For today's Top 5 Wednesday, the theme is tough freeze, so books, you know, with mental issues or health issues or issues in general. So I have pulled five books today. Here we go. This is Top 5 Wednesday. The first book that I have chosen is If I Stay by Gail Foreman. This is a book about a girl who is in a car accident with her family and upon post-accident now has to decide if she wants to remain alive and like stay and live for the people she still has or if she would rather allow herself to die and leave behind the life that will constantly be full of reminders basically of what she could have had. If I Stay has five stars from me on Goodreads and my review is on there as well. I loved If I Stay so much. It impacted my life in such a way that in the middle of reading it I had to put the book down and go hug my family, especially my little brothers. I'm very close with my brothers, and this book just, <sighs> it messed me up. The next book that I have chosen for Top 5 Wednesday is As Long As We Both Shall Live by Lurleen McDaniel. And this is the story of a girl who had brain cancer growing up, and she is in remission at the moment, but she still is in and out of the hospital just for various health reasons. And in one of her hospital trips, she meets a boy who suffers from cystic fibrosis. And it is their story of how they fall in love and the challenges that they face as a couple. Someone who has suffered through brain cancer and someone who is currently suffering from cystic fibrosis. So definitely a sad book. If you've read anything by Lurleen McDaniel, then you are familiar with her writing and the fact that it is almost always sad. It's realistic in the sense that not everybody has a happily ever after, but definitely, definitely love, love, love this book. Very sad, very good, as long as we both shall live. The next book that I have chosen is 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher, and 13 Reasons Why is about a boy who knew this girl in school who recently committed suicide, and suddenly he finds a box of tapes on his doorstep, and each tape is something that she had made before she killed herself. The tapes each feature somebody from his friend's life who she blames leading up to her suicide. And he is one of the tapes. He doesn't know which tape, he doesn't know what kind of impact he had in her decision to kill herself. So it is about him listening to these tapes, getting more insight into her life, and Basically, it's a very, very powerful story, in my opinion. It shows what the smallest thing you can do to affect somebody's life, and it also shows the aftermath of family and friends dealing with somebody's suicide. So, I definitely recommend 13 Reasons Why. If you are in the mood for a contemporary, powerful read, that would be this book right here. The next book that I have chosen is A Time to Kill by John Grisham. Now, John Grisham is really known for writing these action-y lawyer attorney story. This is about an attorney in Mississippi who is taken on a very high profile case dealing with a little girl in this town who was raped and just torn up and beaten all because she was black and this deals with racism in a very southern town. Definitely a very powerful read. This book made me cry the movie made me cry, uh, it made me hate people more than I already do, and then it made me love people more than I already do. This book definitely has its moments where it kind of gets a little dull just because it has a lot of judicial and lawyer speak, and a lot of it at the time when I read it went over my head because it was a little bit younger when I read this book, but definitely deals with some tough stuff and very realistic issues that people face every day. Now the last book that I chose for Top 5 Wednesday is not something that I currently own. It was a book that I had borrowed from the library years and years ago and have not been able to find it in print. Um, I'm going to actually, now that I'm making this video and I remembered it, I'm going to look on Book Depository and see if I can find it. But either way, the book is called Peeling the Onion by Wendy Orr. It is the story of a girl, if I remember correctly, she was in a car accident and she suffered severe burns. 
I think it was from a car accident. Anyway, she suffered severe burns and it's about her coping with how different her, her life is going to be now. She has to deal with physical therapy, she has to deal with the fact that her appearance has drastically changed and will continue to do so over the course of her life. She has to deal with the fallout of friendships, uh, friends who couldn't handle the new reality. Uh, she has to deal with her reaction from her family and their coping mechanisms and all in all, very good book. I remembered it just as I was trying to find a fifth book today. Um, and I had originally picked Perks of Being a Wallflower, but to be perfectly honest, I wasn't a huge fan of Perks of Being a Wallflower, so I didn't really want to feature it in the video, and so I chose Peeling the Onion. Um, I absolutely recommend that book if you can get your hands on it. Good luck, because I can't find it anywhere. So that was this week's Top 5 Wednesday. Sorry if it's rushed. Sorry if it was boring. Sorry if I'm blotchy and gross looking. Like I said, I just came back from driving on a trip, and I'm sick and just 50 shades of dead inside right now. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. Let's be friends. I love having friends, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!